morning everyone and uh, my name's Wendy Power Stoughton. I'm the founding director of Fast Trauma Support and I just wanted to say thank you very much for choosing to be here with me this morning on the Health and Wellbeing Theatre and I'm really looking forward to spending the next 30 minutes with you exploring how perceptions and your fingertips could hold the key to resolving blue light trauma. But before we delve into that, I'd just like to ask you all a question, if I may. How many of us have felt held back from achieving our true potential because of something that happened or something someone said or did in the past? That has stuck and that has the annoying, distressing habit of resurfacing, causing discomfort, maybe even a little bit of fight, flight, freeze, and usually at a time where you could really do without it the least. Show of hands. Right, a lot of people here. Of course, those somethings can take very different shapes and forms and intensities, but the real problem comes when those somethings hold you back enough to start taking control of your life. Imagine if that something was a horrifically traumatic incident that happened during the course of your work. And imagine that that wasn't an isolated incident, that you knew there was a very real threat of something similar or equally traumatic, or even worse, that could happen at any point during your working day. And imagine that day after day, how that continual fear would wear you down, perhaps starting to affect the way you work, to affect your family, perhaps stopping you from working at all. Well, these are the people that we at FAST seek to support, and in fact, exist for. I set up Fast Trauma Support in April 2020 in emergency response to the overwhelming stress and trauma being experienced by our frontline healthcare and emergency services fast, uh, staff. At that time, the mental health issues that they were experiencing were greatly exacerbated by that first horrific wave of the COVID-19 pandemic. And here we are, 29 months later, still here, needed even more than ever. Now dealing with exhaustion, burnout, continual stress, and of course, increasing symptoms and diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder. And so much more needs to be done. In the Freedom of Independence request, the Freedom of Information request, um, it was reported that in 2021-2022, there were 13,260 UK police officers signed off with mental health issues. That is an incredible record and a real increase on the previous figures of 8,450. So, what has this support looked like over the last 29 months? Well, within 24 hours of receiving a request for support on our simple online website form, not only has the requester been contacted, but has been matched with a practitioner and their first appointment has been set to fit in with their timetable. Our team of 30 volunteer, advanced trained, trauma experienced practitioners have delivered hundreds and hundreds of online sessions. And we have got 100% positive results. And that is in just up to four sessions, or if there are particularly traumatic signs of stress, up to eight sessions. And we know that because we've been collecting data right from the start, data 
that allows us to see where perhaps we need to adapt or improve or change what our offering needs to be according to the circumstances, but also so that we can talk about it to you. But as well as that quantitative uh, results that we've had, we've also had brilliant qualitative. We have had so many that have been able to go back to work after their sessions. We've had very many who've been able to stay at work when they never thought they were going to be able to. And also, we've had a lot who have reversed their decision to resign after their sessions. But what they all have in common is that thanks to the self-help tools we teach them along the way with their sessions, that they can really trust work, all of them have been able to deal so much better with any stress or traumas that have arisen during their working day. But by far the best feedback that we ever get is that FAST is life-changing and life-saving. But we didn't stop there. The vast numbers of those coming to us with serious work-related trauma made us want to go further. And as a result, we've run trials with the Southwest Police Constabulary very successfully. We've uh, created a report around that of our findings. Um, we have developed a, a, a model that is really effective in its workings. We have carried out research into trauma, more specifically in post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, we have developed a protocol and a tools resources bank. We've set up an excellence program in training and delivery. And we've collaborated with all the top people in our field and in the emergency service workers. FAST is gaining a reputation for being responders, innovators, and also often challenges. And my vision, my mission, and my passion, and that of my teams, is to make as much difference to contributing to we, as much as we can to the changing the face of uh, mental health perceptions, and subsequently those approaches to mental health support. So in this short time together, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk a little bit about the origins of the term PTSD and then move on to some of the myths that surround the term PTSD that we have found have caused massive hindrance. And then that moves on to us um, changing that perception of PTSD and the massive difference that that simple changes, the simple changes we're proposing can make. And then how uh, that has led to our evidence-based proven solution um, into blue light trauma. So, the origins of the term. Well, acute trauma has been called many things over the years. It's been called, um, it's been called acute mania. It's been called uh, shell shock. It's been called soldier's heart, insanity. But in actual fact, it was during the Vietnam War that the term came about, and that was in the 70s. The particular atrocities of that war remained etched in the memories of those returning veterans without any seeming recovery or cure post-disorder. And that stayed with them for many, many, many years. Some of them still are suffering with that. Um, but nowadays, it's a term that's frequently used and increasingly used to describe any trauma that's over and above the norm, that's usually uh, caused by something outside of an individual's control. And that term is used quite frequently now without, it, uh, without any real thought. You know, we've even come across children who are using that term to describe their behavior and their feelings. And unfortunately, this overuse of the term has led to many myths and perceptions around PTSD, which aren't always helpful. But before we go into these myths, I'd like to ask you another question, if I may. 